Hi, this is Jeff McCormick with Crunchy Data. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the Postgres operator release 3.4, and we'll talk about its various features. The 3.5 release is going to be released in January of 2019. That will include more features than we're going to demonstrate today. Uh, many of the more advanced features, too, will be demonstrated in upcoming videos. First off, the Postgres operator user view of the tool is seen through the PGO command line client. That tool is called PGO. And there's a Windows version, Linux, and Mac versions are also available on the GitHub release site. If you run the PGO command from a client, <clears throat> it'll connect to the operator's REST API. And it gives you a view into what the operator is doing, how it's configured, and the various Postgres clusters that are deployed. One such command is PGO show cluster. And if you say the keyword all, it'll show you all of the clusters. On some systems with hundreds of Postgres database clusters, you'll want to limit that output. And you can do that. Instead of using all, you can use a selector pattern or filter. In this case, I'll look for a specific name of a cluster called My Cluster. And that'll just return detailed information about one Postgres cluster. And here, a Postgres cluster we're referring to as a primary and some number of replicas, optional replicas. You can create a new cluster by saying PGO create cluster, give it a name. And then, if you say dash H, you can see all of the available command line flag options. Those options let you customize greatly the deployment and makeup of your Postgres cluster. For example, one such option is resources config. And here, you can say something like small. And what that's going to do is create a Postgres cluster a primary and it's going to insert into it a resource configuration called small that we've defined within the Postgres operator configuration. You can look at the Postgres operator configuration by saying PGO show config. This displays what the, how the operator is actually configured on the server side. Here are the container resource definitions we defined. Here we've defined two. One's called large and one's called small. You can choose any names you want. But whenever I passed in the resource config flag saying small, it means use these values for memory and CPU. In that configuration, there's also various storage definitions. And likewise, you can create your Postgres cluster components and specify specific storage configurations. And this lets you split or use different kinds of storage for different components within your Postgres cluster. You can also use these default values that are set. So if you don't specify a storage configuration, when you create a primary or, a back, or perform a backup or a replica, these defaults will be taken. And that's how the Postgres operator configuration file works. It sets up default values, many of which you can override on the command line. You, you can perform a PG base backup by running PGO backup and then the name of the cluster. That command just submitted a Kubernetes job. It runs a PG base backup. It dynamically allocates backup volume for you. And you can repeatedly run this command, and it will just keep creating time stamped full database backups. Starting in operator 3.4, PG backrest is also an alternative backup and restore capability. And large enterprise users tend to like PG Backrest because it better supports things like Delta Restores and Point in Time Restores on large data sets.
earlier I created a database called with back that has PG backrest enabled. So when I say PGO backup with back and specify backup type equals PG backrest, that will create a PG backrest backup against that database. And again, you can run these backups as many times as you wish. If you actually look at Kubernetes, you can see the backup jobs are started. By running backups as a Kubernetes job, it offloads very long running activities or workflows as Kubernetes jobs, which can be scheduled individually. You can also test a cluster by saying PGO test and give it a cluster name. This just performs a simple SQL check against the database cluster. It also prints out a equivalent psql command you can use to interact with the cluster. In this case, or this example, my cluster is a two node cluster, one primary and one replica. You can perform a manual failover by running PGO failover, give it a cluster name, and then pass in a query command flag. And that's going to look for replicas that are candidates as failover targets. In this case, there's only one because there's only one replica. By replacing the query flag with a target flag and specifying the target deployment that you want to fail over to, you can actually initiate a manual failover. A failover is relatively quick. It deletes the primary deployment and does a Postgres promote on the replica and then relabels the promoted replica so that the ser primary service can route traffic to it. Now we have a one node my cluster Postgres running. Instead of two. And you'll see that the PGO test shows that it's actually working. So that's a manual failover. In subsequent videos, we'll demonstrate how automatic failover works within the operator. That'll be a video unto itself as the use cases for automatic failover are pretty significant and, and complex. You can also do a simple disk statistic command called PGODF to show you the percent utilization on a Kubernetes volume versus the size of the Postgres data set. This is useful just for capacity planning. In this demonstration, I've got a three node Kubernetes cluster. Two of the worker nodes I've associated or added node labels to. One's called speed equals fast, one's called speed equals slow. The Postgres operator takes advantage of node labels so that you can target specific nodes for your cluster. For example, you can say PGO create cluster This one we'll just call some slow PG. Give it a node label of speed equals slow. That's going to create a Postgres primary and it's going to insert a node affinity rule of speed equals slow. So whenever Kubernetes gets this request, it'll try to schedule it on a node that matches. Likewise, you can schedule one on the opposite node. By default, the Postgres operator, when it creates a primary and a replica, it will choose an alternate node to deploy the replica on versus what the primary is on. And this gives you an automatic HA capability of splitting Postgres cluster between two distinct nodes within a larger Kubernetes cluster.
Other sidecar extensions are available in the Postgres Operator 3.4. One of those is PG Bouncer. By passing in dash dash PG Bouncer, sidecar PG Bouncer will get created specifically for this cluster. Likewise, PG Pool is supported. By saying dash dash PG pool, a separate PG pool deployment will be created specifically for this cluster. I hope you like this video. This is the 3.4 version of the Postgres operator. Uh, 3.5 is expected to uh, be produced in January 2019, which includes even more features. Uh, there will be subsequent videos for some advanced use cases and features of the Postgres operator. Again, this is Jeff McCormick for Crunchy Data. The project is found at GitHub at Crunchy Data slash Postgres operator. The released images, free images, are available also on Docker Hub. Thank you.